My name is Rolangie. <laughs> no, y'all like, what? No, I go by Ro J, Ro, RJ, a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, but I guess seeing that my name is Rolangi, my mom felt I was going to stand out. So that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit of a class clown coming up and uh, that was pretty much me just being a fool because I wasn't the most athletic in the class or um, I wasn't the smartest, but I was smart enough to do what I needed to do to get uh, get on honor roll. But I wasn't like the brain of the school. So I wasn't the athlete, I wasn't the brain. So what am I gonna do to be noticed? And that was me, my ticket to that was just being foolish. And that's kind of how I made my claim to fame, as you call it, amongst various circles. So with that, I guess it was only natural that I would probably ease into the lane of entertainment. So went to school with every intention of being a journalist because I used to love to write, write everything from plays to short stories. I used to go through notebooks by the day. So I thought I was going to be a journalist. I even wrote for the Times Daily newspaper in Florence, Alabama when I was in high school. So I just figured what I would do. But by the time I got to college, I was overwriting everything. But I had already <laughs> accepted a scholarship into the communications program at Jacksonville State University. So what am I going to do now? I'm here at college and I don't know already changed my major before I started it. But I stayed in the communications field and took on radio and television. And that probably was the best decision that I made in life because it's easy for me. I love it. So yeah, with that, I've been in radio since 2001. I've been in television since 2003. And it's been pretty fun. So yeah, been doing radio and television for a while. In 2002, I decided I was going to start my own promotions company. Middle Child Promotions was born uh, during my summer internship at the radio station. And with that, I just wanted, I had such a passion for music and discovering new artists or, you know, yeah, basically new artists that I wanted to share with other people and the quickest way to get that information out was through the internet. So I built a website, middlechildpromotions.com and I used to like, I felt like I was breaking records. I was breaking artists because I was always posting what I came across, whether you knew them, but not knew a lot about them or you didn't know them yet or somebody like running the independent route. So a lot of, I put a lot of people onto a lot of artists. Uh, my first major interview was in 2005. New artist, John Legend, was, uh, that was major. That was really major. He was my first interview. Uh, from there, I went on to interview uh, an unknown artist by the name of Trey Songs. And then that led into more interviews from Sierra to Chris Brown, Kelly Rowland, Maya, Monica, uh, so many artists, Faith Evans. Uh, I even took on producers, Kendrick Dean, Jante Austin, uh, I interviewed Neo. It's been a pretty interesting journey with MCP. But as time went on, when Twitter boomed, there was less of a need for websites. So <laughs> people were more about headlines then as opposed to going to read four articles. Uh, so that kind of took away some of my traffic and then I was battling spam and bots and viruses and I just got tired of it and with the way the industry ended up changing from physical copies of CDs to the streaming and digital age a lot of the record labels were even closing and folding so a lot of the contacts that I, make, I was making kind of serve no purpose at that point because they weren't really developing artists as they did when I started. So there was less and less interview opportunities. There was less ways of me kind of, you know, I guess discovering some of the new, newer artists. So everybody was kind of transitioning over to a different form of media. So I just kind of let MCP go <laughs> as far as the website and breaking artists. But with that, I ended up getting to work with one of my favorite artists in the world. Uh, I always hate saying 
who and what it is, but PT cusses me out because I don't say it. So yeah, I ended up getting the opportunity to work with Grammy Award winning artist Monica. <laughs> Doing everything from production coordination, uh, digital work, you know, a digital liaison between her management and her label and personal assistant type things. So that's what I felt was like, oh, this is my major client. And uh, that has been an experience all in itself. And I've learned a lot from that. And that's been going on for about 10 years at this point. So radio, television, artist management, uh, <laughs> production coordinating from doing festivals and shows, got my hands in a lot of things. But when 2020 was approaching, I decided I wanted to take another step toward what I've always wanted to do and uh, gave Middle Child Promotions another project, which was a TV show. <sighs> Out the box, baby. So yeah, it's, I've done a lot of crazy, can I say shit? I've done a lot of crazy shit up until now, but everything that I have done has been rooted in entertainment. It has been rooted in music. It has been rooted in fun. And I, there's nothing else to say for real, though. but I enjoy it. And because I enjoy it, I make it look easy, which is another thing that, uh, <laughs> People misunderstand about the industry because I make it look easy doesn't mean it's easy. And there's still some things that I haven't quite done yet that I'm planning to do, but I'm sure I'll make that look easy too. <laughs> what up, y'all? Y'all know me. If you don't, now you do. I'm DJ Primetime 256. Don't forget the 256. Um, and... This is a little bit about me. So, I grew up in California and my car broke down right here in Huntsville. And that's where the story begins. All right, so West Coast guy coming down to Huntsville, trying to get my feet wet. And I knew I could fit into like some of the crowds and the things that was going on because I was fast as hell. Uh, I ran track. Shout out to Bob Jones, Madison, let's get it. Uh, ran track, played football, and then I wound up at this lovely ladies prom, and I met two dope DJs that worked at the radio station. And he was like, hey, we looking for interns. And I was like, huh? I plus play and record when their DJ's on. You know what I'm saying? I be hitting my little favorite mixes, huh? I, DJ, don't say nothing real quick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I be hitting the tape decks for a minute. So I know this is where my passion's at and this is where I want to be. And then, next thing you know, I was at the DJ, I was at the uh, radio station. I was sneaking into the clubs, carrying all the DJ's equipment. I was trying to figure out where can I fit in, what do I get in out here. And then next thing you know, your boy ended up on a hill DJing all the hot parties like Bears You Dare, and you know, we did the little penny raise, and y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't gonna tell the business on the hill, I ain't gonna tell the business on the hill. But interning from at the radio station that we up to going in carrying DJ's equipment into the crowd to not knowing what to do next and joining the military, which was dope because I always felt like that was gonna be a part of my life and join the military, because my dad was in the military, and my dad's dad was in the military. So it was like a whole little army thing, so I knew it was eventually gonna happen. So did that, and it was dope. I did everything you've seen on TV. You know, from shooting, the pl uh, shooting out the guns, and low crawling, throwing grenades, to jumping out of planes. Uh, and it was a great experience. I did that for 10 years, and to this day, my back hurts. Thank you, Army. <laughs> but low key, like my experience was dope. I got to uh, be a, become a recruiter. I got to be a part of 20th Group Special Operations. I got to do a lot of, or excuse me, 20th Group Special Forces and 450 Civil Affairs Psychological, Civil Affairs and Psychological Operations. So I got to do a lot of great dope things in the military and you know, it was great. After that, I uh, 
came something, I came right back here to Huntsville and I was a recruiter. And I still was like, you know what? I can still do this DJ thing. Let me, let me, let me get in here and see what's going on. I still kept hanging out with the same DJs that I used to hang out with, talking to them. I had an opportunity to get into a club. Shout out to the Boss Times 25, Mark Patton. Appreciate you, gave me opportunity. And I started DJing at fourth quarter and I realized I can do this for real. Then I started transitioning out the military and I said, if I can make $2,000 a month DJing, I can quit my job. And I quit my job. Alabama a said, you can start here and go anywhere. I didn't graduate, but I listened to that shit. <laughs> But so I started there. I went anywhere and now man, I DJ across the world and I love it and I got to meet this crazy dude named RJ. I was getting ready to DJ um a uh an event. Actually I met RJ at the Black Arts Festival or working at WeUp as an intern. But I'm gonna fast forward because I'm gonna give all y'all that later, right? So we got to doing dope shit because I was DJ, getting ready to DJ a festival at the Proud University of Alabama a &M. You feel me? <laughs> Shout out to the Bulldogs. And they were looking for a host. And I was like, dopest dude I know, where there's one or one million, he's going to turn everybody up in the crowd. So I was like, we got to get RJ, got to get RJ. Press some button. I was like, I know RJ work with Monica. He probably on tour. He doing this and this and this. And I kept calling him. And his secretary kept picking up. And she was like, he busy right now, PT. But I finally got a hold of him. And when I did, he was like, man, let's do it. Let's do it. And from then on, like, he hit me up. Like, actually, it's been a rap since then. It's been a rap since then. And RJ just hit me up one day. He was like, hey, PT, I'm going to do a show. You want to be a part of it? And I'm like, <laughs> Lekiri. <laughs> I was like, dope. I gotta be, man. He's a dope individual. I'm a dope individual. And when you put two dope people together, you get us. Get some out the box shit. And uh, that's what y'all get to see. <laughs> dope shit. Out the box. <laughs> Met your ass in 2005. Yep, 2005, 2005, 2005. And you know what's funny is like everybody had somebody that they were like calling, like they were mentoring or whatever. Yep. So I would be like, that's my, that's my protege. That's my protege. He wasn't working up under me. Either. Right, I was in there, yeah. Because I knew that you were just as crazy as I was. So I was like, that's going to be my shadow right there. Like every time I seen you, you was <laughs> always doing something big. Like I'll never forget the Black Arts Festival, when you got in the dance battle. Like, oh. you was cool the first time, but then when you called the little kid out. I called this little kid out. I know the little boy <laughs> wanna know like 11, 12 at the most. And you know, I've always prided myself on being a dancer. Like, I went and, <laughs> little, little known fact, I went and auditioned to be a backup dancer for Destiny's Child. Oh, shit. When I was getting ready for the Destiny for Field Tour, I used to study music videos. Yeah. And I, I mean, any video, Aaliyah, TLC, Usher, anybody that was good at dancing and had choreography, I was learning the moves. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, I got this. I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to battle dance somebody, right? This little boy came up and embarrassed the hell out of me. Skills. <laughs> <laughs> he could dance oh, for God. real. I was like, I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> Yesterday, my, my confidence shattered. <laughs> Yo, the whole crowd went crazy uh, when he got up there. Yeah, he did. But, you know, that's part of what I like to do for entertainment. Even if I thought that I could beat that kid or not, you know, it's all about playing to the audience. And, boy, they ate it up. And that was, that was like, some of my first big crowds. Really? Yeah, like, I hosted stuff in college, like, my last semester in college, and I hosted little things here and there, but they were always just like a, a smaller, more intimate crowd. Mm -hmm. That was like my first crowd. You couldn't tell. And you couldn't tell. like, I ate that up. But I was backstage as an intern and I'm like, man, he's rocking it. Like, how do you do this in front of all these people? Like, it was dope. I'm, and I'm literally an intern. I'm sitting there like taking notes. Like, I'm backstage, I'm supposed to be doing my job. I'm like, okay, all right, it, all right. It's all right. weird in a sense because I don't think I, I don't think I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't think about stuff until after the fact. Living in the moment. Yeah. 
But even not even that. I don't even know if I'm there. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't even know if I'm present. Like I'm watching myself do this stuff, and I'm just like, it, nothing hits me until I'm done. You outside yourself. You yeah, really? I'm just like, what? What are you doing? So outside yourself, are you shaking your head like, what? Is yeah, pretty much. <laughs> because I say anything. Can I say shit? I've done a lot of crazy shit. Oh, <laughs> so now do anything for interaction mm -hmm. and make sure whoever's in that audience is having a good time. So I'm not there. <laughs> I'm watching myself, just analyzing. Just having a good time. Yeah, it's, hmm. it's crazy. But that was those were some of my biggest moments. And uh, when I found out that you were uh, gonna be helping us out at the festival, and <laughs> I will never forget this day. Y'all see this tank top and all this stuff. <laughs> I, was, I was getting heavy into my gym thing. So I thought, I would, you know, I'm out here doing, I ain't have not one ab, but you couldn't tell me that, right? And the program director called me in. He was like, hey, you know, uh, you work out. You probably, you, you should have nothing but like, pull up your shirt. And I'm just like, <laughs> we got to go to H&R. Right, we got to go to H&R. What's going on? But I put it, he's like, no, yeah, we should get PT. And I'm like, the hell just happened. They needed somebody to host the DVD for the festival mm -hmm. and they wanted eye candy. <laughs> not eye candy. This is my first, this is my first, you know, glimpse in the industry. It's not about talent. It's about the look. <laughs> so, you know, PT has Ladies. like 2% body fat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they pulled him in to host the DVD with Shy. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Shy. That's my girl. They, That's were, my girl. they were both like holding it down. But it was great that they let him do it because I actually had real work to do at the festival, like mm. hosting stages and all this stuff. So there's no way I was going to be said, He said TV. real work, no, no I talent. I, I heard what he said. I heard all of it. <laughs> when I was really out here, you know. I feel, yeah, 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 doing so real work. I was doing a different audience than what I was doing. Uh, yeah, you, yes. I like how you put but that. But you got to deal with like, you got to interview Lloyd. I did shop, yes, yeah. You yep, like yep. Escape. You had, you had all that going on. Let me tell you who I was really excited to uh, interview though. Who was that? All the food vendors. <laughs> No, oh like, my oh, God! Man, the food vendors, <laughs> the artists were dope, but the food vendors, man, that's where it's at. The funnel cakes, act shy. She know I'm not lying. Yes. The funnel cakes, the corn dogs, like I would never forget her on the TV. Just <laughs> live from the chicken truck. See, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about. What? Why is this on the DVD? But it was, it was pretty dope. But years like after that like you went off to the military mm. you was doing your thing in the military and all this so i would just see him here and there at that point right periodically but every time i saw you at the club we have dance battle we would have a dance i battle. didn't know you were studying r b moves though like i didn't know Man, you I, I didn't know you knew all the moves if i, I had vhs tapes upon vhs tapes yeah this one when you could go right to that's the why i can't win a dance battle bro mm -hmm. i didn't have i'd be trying to make it up i got a hey, prime time squad <laughs> I, we got to get together and come up with some real moves like how they did break in. You remember the old school movie break in? I remember. You still Turbo. Win. You still we're win. not gonna win. No, nah. All right, we gonna try. I'm gonna get. We gonna do something. We gonna do something. My boy will be at the clubs, and I was like, if PT one mix is five D, if they weren't mixing, if PT one mixing or if Mark Patton wasn't mixing, the boss. Our live was not gonna be on the floor. Like, yeah, I, I know they they know me well enough to know what to play when I when they see me walk in the club, and. One night, tell them about the time you said you felt so defeated because I didn't dance. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you're a DJ in the club and RJ comes in, like, if he he dance, he's he's he likes to party. He's a whole vibe in himself. Right. So he comes in and like you said, whether it's one or a million, he's gonna turn around and give you the whole vibe, right? So if he come in and he don't, he ain't partying. It's like. You trash. <laughs> trash. One, one time I did one time, dance yeah, he, PT was that He walked in the club. He, he was in there for like, yeah, he was in there for like 20 minutes and he left. And I was like, damn, I suck. <laughs> 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 like, oh, man. Hey, now when he walk in the club, ask him what he do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, RJ, I walk to the bar before he get his first drink. He, ah, yeah, why you do that yeah, to me? Yeah. They, they know I, I, it's a set. I got to come in. I got to get my drink, and then I'm going to hit the floor. If they right. get me on that floor before I get my drink, I'm not going to be too mad, but I'm going to be a little mad because now I still have that, you know, the alcohol knocks down your, your inhibition. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm conscious of what I'm doing, and y'all got me partying. He don't be conscious. He just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. 
Just let it go. I did not know that was like a, a code amongst y'all DJs in the city because it's been said just in random conversation at least three times. They be like, like if RJ doesn't dance, yeah, so, so, like I'm their focus when yeah. they see me in the club, and that's that's a lot of response. Like there's certain that, people that like when they come out, you got to make sure that they have a good time. You're one of those people. Make sure I have a good time. You know what I'm saying? You're one of those people, man. You like, you create a vibe. And it's like, and then you only come to the dopest clubs with the dopest <laughs> DJs. So, true, true, ah, true. you're going to run into a good time anyway. Let's get it. <laughs> true, true. And uh, after all that, you know, just years of, of that and building the brotherhood, the bond, I think that's what makes working on the show so freaking easy. Cause I think we, like we genuinely truly know each other. We know oh, each other's yeah. energy, each other's vibe. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, sometimes I have to reel this one. Like, I be have to tell. Like calm down. I gotta get <laughs> RJ. Gotta take, gotta he be like calm down. I be like let loose, <laughs> let loose. <laughs> One thing too with me is because I know at the end of the day is a product that we're getting out. We could be goofy all day. Right, right. And I'm cool with that. But I know we still gotta have some kind of structure to it. Yeah, and the thing with me is. We can be structured all day, but we gotta have fun with it because that's where the creativity comes in. Right. So that's where it works, and that's why the, the energy flows like that. That's why we dope. <laughs> dope and dope. That's why we dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the 80s, hey, hey, and the, <laughs> hey, hey, they used to call it cocaine in the 80s. You feel me? You feel me? We dope. Okay. <laughs> cocaine in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> okay well yeah man. i gotta say this before we get out here like sitting back like thinking about this like i remember it was all a dream i used to read word of magazine <laughs> you know what I'm salt and pepper and heavy d was on the magazine right. you know what i'm saying <laughs> Turn your life around. Though. I did. I tried to, man. I tried to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 You, you see? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I was trying to change. Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying. To, I'm still trying to get my life together. Thank God for this entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it saved me. It saved me. <laughs> oh well. Listen, we got a reality show. Yeah, we're gonna kick that off. You ready for this? I am. Y'all get to see. <laughs> <laughs> really what this is like. Y'all get to see me when I'm not being professional, when I get yeah. to just act up. Then you get to see, like, this is, it's crazy because it's us all the time. Yeah, it really is. This is literally nothing but a conversation with the camera in front of us. Like, it's a little, crazy. A little bit of leather. I'm going to get him to detox off Hennessy. No. That's going to be my challenge for the show. I'm going to always drink Hennessy. <laughs> Shout out to my future sponsors. They don't even know yet. You know now. <laughs> If you didn't know, watch this, watch this. Cause y'all, it's this is magic, right? It's gonna be like at Hennessy. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, next week I guess, or yeah, whenever. We'll let y'all know when the to... Stay tuned. Yeah, when that comes. Yeah, you know where y'all can catch us at? Y'all can see us at Out the Box TV. Yeah, <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs>